Hey, what's up guys? So just gonna make a quick video here going over uh, a couple things with the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module here. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna go over is how to upload code to the module directly from the Arduino IDE via a USB to serial converter. Okay, so we'll go over that and talk about some of the things that could cause these upload errors. You know, so if you're experiencing uh, ESP com sync failed, uh, com open failed, upload mem failed, all those different kinds of errors, uh, we'll go over some of the things that might be causing those for you. Uh, the second thing I'm gonna go over is uh, how to achieve ultra low sleep currents with the ESP8266. So right here, I've got uh, a breakout board and uh, I'm running some sample code that's basically just booting up, connecting to an access point, and then going into a deep sleep. And I'm able to achieve 20 microamps of sleep current right here. And uh, that's incredible for battery powered applications. So you can get many years of battery uh, with that kind of sleep current. So if like you're waking up once an hour, connecting up to the cloud, sending the data and then going back to sleep for a day or an hour, whatever, uh, you can get some pretty significant battery life. So anyway, uh, the first thing though before we dive in is uh, just to talk about the hardware here. Uh, I do have the Adafruit Hoosa ESP8266 breakout board here, uh, which is a great little board, uh, especially for development because I'm planning on designing a custom board using the ESP-12 module here and uh, I need my development platform here to be pretty bare bones because I'm basically just going to lift this right off of here uh, and plop it right into my custom board and if we go down here to the learn section real quick I want to pull open the schematic for this board here it is uh, you can see here the bare essentials needed to uh, to work with the module. So we've got all the pull ups and pull downs, we've got the GPIO zero push button, the reset push button, uh, an onboard LED, some level translators here for the USB to serial converter, um, and uh, a voltage regulator with some steering diodes for your input voltage. So if you're going to power this from 5 volts, you can apply that right to the VN or a battery, right to the VBAT pin, and then out is your your 3.3 volts to the module. So uh, obviously you know you've got to be careful with power on this guy because uh, you're gonna have some pretty significant peak currents with the Wi-Fi module. So uh, anyway I'm not interested in using this voltage regulator and in fact what you're looking at here is uh, um, I have the external power supply hooked up to it and it is directly uh, feeding the 3.3 volt pin on the ESP8266. So I'm applying power right to the 3.3 volt pin and ground right here. And if you look closely, uh, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but if you look closely, I actually removed the voltage regulator right here. And I also removed uh, the resistor for the LED R2 right here because I'm not going to use that in my design. And uh, I'll show you later on why I removed those and it has to do with uh, just more uh, sources for uh, uh, leakage current. So anyway, I'm, you know, you don't want to be back feeding that voltage regulator that's consuming current that you don't uh, need it for anyway. So anyway, let me uh, jump back over to the IDE here. And uh, so uh, to get this set up to program the ESP8266 directly, here. And by the way, we are loading code directly onto the module. Uh, there's no uh, external Arduino or anything like that communicating to it via AT commands. This is straight running on the module itself. So that's kind of cool. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this already. But uh, to get this set up, we go over to Arduino, Preferences. Uh, and if you're on a PC, you just go to File, Preferences. It's pretty much the same thing and then you want to go down to your additional boards managers URLs and then copy in this dot JSON URL and I'll put a link in the description below uh, but if you follow the Adafruit guide the hookup guide there and walk go through that tutorial I'm sure it gets into this as well but you drop that in right there 
Uh, I have another URL in here as well for other boards I use, but so you just kind of create a list of your board manager URLs right in there. Okay, we hit OK, and then you're going to want to go up to Tools, Board. Oops, what happened here? Tools, Board. Oh man, come on. I'm going up too high. Boards Manager right at the very top. And then I'm just going to filter this real quick here and put ESP in. And you'll see this. And then on your machine, if you're doing it for the first time, you want to make sure you select the latest version. I already have it installed, but you would select the latest version and then click install, let it run through. Uh, and then you will have access to all of the ESP8266 modules here from the board selection. And you know, if it if it doesn't show up, you may have to reboot the the uh, the IDE. But anyway, uh, we're using the Adafruit Husa ESP8266, so we have that selected. Flash size the four meg, three meg option here, 80 megahertz upload speed. I've got that maxed out at 921600. Uh, that's a source for upload issues right there. So if you're having upload fails, uh, you may want to dial that down to 115200. The other one, of course, is make sure you've got the right serial port uh, selected here. So that's what this is. And that's it for the setup. Now I've got some sample code here that we can walk through, but let me just try this. I know this compiles already. So if we go to upload right now, oh no, we gotta wait for it to compile again. No, 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 there we go. You're gonna see an, uh, an error has occurred. So what you have to do is place the board into programming mode. And you do this by first pulling GPIO zero uh, low. So I'm gonna pull up in that schematic real quick here. And that's why they have a button on GPIO zero. So you can pull that low. And there's some silk screen on there. You'll see GPIO zero right there. You also have reset over there. And so we have to press and hold the GPIO zero button then we press and release the reset button then let go of the GPIO zero button okay and that's it now it's in programming mode and we should now be able to upload to the module okay and we still have a fail I'm gonna try and do that again and I'm doing this on purpose because there's something else going on here but sometimes it works and that's one of the problems with this module that I've experienced. There it goes, it's starting to upload. Is that it seems kind of flaky. There's uh, some intermittent, intermittent type of uh, issues here. So, um, and it's very, very frustrating, but uh, there we go. So it did take that upload. Uh, but if you've noticed here, what I have set up is an external jumper here across GPIO 16 to the reset pin and that is needed for the uh, deep sleep function of the part so in order for it to wake back up it needs to essentially reset itself using GPIO 16 and that will cause conflicts for programming so I'm going to remove that jumper or just one leg of it and now we should never see that issue hold the GPIO 0 button press and release the reset button and then go ahead and upload okay and now it should work there it goes so I found that that is the most consistent way to uh, program the part over and over again without fails I've also had issues where I had to actually power cycle the part that has helped I've also had issues where just unplugging and plugging the USB to serial converter back into the board has helped. Also, make sure you're using a, uh, a newer release of the Arduino IDE. I'm using 1.8.1 here. Uh, I had a lot of issues with 1.67. Um, so that was another issue altogether. I also had issues, which I, I thought was an issue, um, with using a USB to serial converter configured for 3.3 volts but that doesn't seem to be an issue anymore but if you have that issue you may want to consider configuring it for 5 volts this Adafruit board is compatible with 5 volt uh, FTDI parts so you would be okay applying using the 5 volt uh, signal levels there 
So anyway, yeah, lots of weird little issues there. And now you can see that it's not able to wake back up and that's because I removed the jumper. So I'll put that back here, make sure I got it. And there we go, now it's resumed, it booted back up, trying to find the access point and then found it and then now it goes to sleep. Okay, so, oh, by the way, when you're looking at that USB to serial converter, it looks upside down and that's because it is. Uh, just on this board, the pinout is backwards from my board, so I had to actually plug it in backwards. And of course, you don't want to power this from the uh, your USB port, at least the 3.3 right so because um, you know the the onboard voltage regulator in the uh, FTDI FT 236 is not going to be able to handle the peak currents of the ESP8266 okay anyway I'm rambling on so that is how you program the board directly from the Arduino IDE and uh, I just want to quickly go over what's what's going on here in this code um, so we've got the uh, the includes up here, and I'm using the uh, Wi-Fi multi library, which is a pretty cool way to uh, to have more than one access point for the Wi-Fi module to look for. So uh, even though right now I'm only using one, uh, anyway. So if we jump down to the setup here, you've got the uh, serial dot begin for the debugging. Uh, of course, I always print out some garbage just so you know because when it boots up it, you get all these random characters so I just kinda add on garbage to it so we know and it doesn't confuse anything and it creates a new line for the fresh good uh, debugging uh, characters here so then booting up then we add that access point I've got a dedicated router for this project I'm working on right now and then in the void loop here um, it's just looping through checking the connection here so if it's not connected, just print out not connected. And when it does connect, then it shows the uh, SSID and IP address of the connection. And then a one second delay. And then it loops through and increments the timekeeper variable here. So after five seconds, then we want to go to sleep right here. So that's what this command here does, this esp.deepsleep, and this is in microseconds. So you may have noticed up here I've got the sleep time here in seconds. So here's just a uh, 1 million multiplier on that to, to, uh, to convert that to microseconds for the function. And then uh, the, we're going to leave the wake RF uh, in the, uh, the default configuration so that when it wakes back up the radio is on. And if you want to learn more about the ESP8266 and some of these other features, check out the guy with the Swiss accent uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I learned a lot from him. And uh, in fact, he does a lot with uh, uh, putting the ESP to sleep. So go check that out. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, anyway, so we've got uh, some delays here around the, the function too, which... Uh, I'm still experimenting with. I don't know if that helps, but it's right now this seems pretty stable, and I've been running this for a few days now. So uh, I'm, I might tweak with that and see if they're needed at all, um, because this here is just wasted time. You know, we don't want to waste 100 milliseconds. The whole idea of sleeping or, or you know trying to maximize your efficiency here is you want to get up, get connected, get your data out, and go back to sleep as soon as possible. So, in fact, you would even put, well, I was going to say something else because, you know, what we did with the Arduino and the, the watchdog timer was, you know, we could sleep it in the middle of the code and then it would wake up and start, you know, right back up where it left, where it went to sleep. So, you know, it would wake up here and then execute the next line of code. Well, with this here, the, the ESP8266, when you sleep it, it does not wake up right at this point. Instead, it'll actually uh, reboot the entire radio. So you start back up up here at void setup. So that's one of the downsides of the, the sleep mode there, but uh, it's not too bad uh, because what you can do is you, uh, you have access to, in fact, I'm gonna just quickly show it here. So if you go to examples and go down to ESP8266 and RTC user memory here, They've got a little example here on how to use the user SRAM of the RTC, 
that's built into the part. So what you can do here, uh, I don't have an example of it here, but what you could do is uh, before going to sleep, going to sleep, configure one of those bytes in the user RAM to basically, you know, set a flag that you went to sleep, and then when you wake back up up here, go and check that memory location, and and if it was set for that flag then you know that you it was a warm start or you were waking up from sleep if it was not set you it means that it was a cold start or a power cycle you actually truly lost power so and then you could even go a step further and have like some basically some like you know uh, some uh, configuration in that RAM so like wherever you wanted to pick back up you know it could it could go there you know like almost like a router kind of like or aggregator you know so however you wanted to do it I don't I don't know it's for me it's not needed for this project but if I ever do have a need to do something like that maybe I'll come back and talk about that okay anyway enough rambling there so that's the code and uh, what I'm gonna do here is show you what kind of sleep currents I'm able to get so I'm gonna disconnect the USB to serial converter here and if we look up at the source measure unit you can see it's actually reading like a negative value. The current is so low. So right now it's it's awake, and you can see we're pulling around, you know, somewhere between 60 and 80 milliamps. Um, and of course, there's some pretty significant peaks in there. Now we're sleeping, and I'm going to zoom in on that and show you the 20 or so microamps of sleep current. So that's pretty good. All right, and then it woke back up, and uh, that's all I really wanted to cover in this video. So uh, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.